That segues into a piece that I have, actually. Okay. Oh, let's hear um, it. So I, I sometimes watch this entrepreneurial show that's on uh, MSNBC in the mornings on Sunday, super early. Mm-hmm. And it, they feature interesting things. It's just people that started with almost nothing and then they built like big industries from it. Not mm-hmm. necessarily humongous. Some of them are pretty big, right. but some of them are just sort of moderately big. And so they, they tell their stories about what I did wrong, what I didn't do wrong. So I'm watching this show and there's this... Uh, guy who did this company called Wayfair, not mm-hmm. the not the home stuff yeah. thing, but this is some kind of an entertainment company. I wasn't real familiar with it, but apparently it's a big deal. And so he built this thing and he was talking about how the hardest thing he had to do was sort of take his hands off it, let other people take control of it. He goes, I had to realize that there were better people to make decisions for me. And that was the hardest part was separating myself from control of the company. And in the meantime, he had, he, he and his wife had a child and he said that kind of changed my perspectives on things and it started making me think about what does that mean? What does that mean to be a dad? What does that mean to be a man? What does that mean to, like, what do these labels mean? Mm-hmm. And so as he started up another thing that he got interested in and he started like this podcast dialogue for him and other men to sit and talk about what does it mean to be a man? And what do you, what are your perceptions on manhood? Where do you feel like it's imposing on you? Do you feel like you live up to these expectations? Are they fair expectations? Where do you think they come from? And I thought I have to listen to an episode of this. So I checked out an episode and I picked episode three, body image issues. Mm -hmm. I thought that sounded like an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Now, they address some of the concerns that I would immediately have, which is, first of all, Every guy around the table is gorgeous. So mm. all these are good-looking, well-built. Mm. Some of them are athletes. Some of them are mm. models, actors. I mean, these are good-looking men. And so immediately a person would think, okay, so you have a group of fantastic-looking men talking yeah. about body image issues because I'm sure you have a lot of problems with your body image issues, you know. But what their point was is that people consider us these really good looking men and we're insecure about our bodies and they think we're not. And they addressed the fact that there are definitely people in society that deal with worse issues with body image, that deal with a lot of prejudice, that that their issues are not about people thinking they don't suit the mold, it's that they do suit the mold. So they said there's, you know, for me as a model, I feel like I'm ridiculously concerned about whether I can eat that piece of pizza or I can't eat that piece of pizza because I've got to have my shirt off at the end of the week and I'm doing this thing. So I got to be careful what I eat. And some of the guys that were athletic, one of them was a boxer and he was talking about, you know, you can, or another guy was saying how he would work out a lot when he was younger because I just would keep bodybuilding and people were telling me like, that's too much. And he's just like, I just felt like I couldn't get big enough because I look at pictures of myself now. I look back and I think, what was I thinking? My head looks so tiny. (laughs) I was so huge because it's just, you know, I I don't know why I thought that was necessary. And so they're kind of going on about these, um, you know, and, and, you know, they did address the idea that men have more leeway. For example, you can go to the pool and you can have the dad bod and, and a lot of women are still attracted to that. They, they go, There's not really an equivalent mm-hmm. female dad bod that you can just go and, and consider it. <laughs> oh, yes, there is. Okay. I have it. Well, no, what, what they were saying is it's not, you know, a lot of women find the dad bod sexier right. than, than right. what's cut. And they talked yeah. about that a little bit too, the idea that, um, he, so they talked in a sort of a round table casual fashion, but then they would break away and he would do interviews. So he did an interview with a plastic surgeon mm-hmm. talking about body image issues and plastic surgery and, you know, what what he knows about it. And then he talked about psychology with um, body dysmorphia and things like that. So it was super informative. What I found really interesting is the guy who's doing this, I'm looking at him, he looks like a really good looking guy. I don't know where he's from. He's ethnic looking. And I would probably, like if I had to wager, I would say some kind of Mideastern, Mid- but he's a good looking dude. And so he's talking to the uh, plastic surgeon And he starts asking about, you know, the surgeon says something to him and he's just like, okay, so if I was going to work on you, like, you know, what what would you say about yourself? Like, what would you fix? Would you fix something? Do you feel like you need to fix something? And he's just like, oh, I would fix my nose. And immediately I thought, your nose goes with your face because you have this ethnic looking face. And I say that as a person with an ethnic face who has an ethnic nose. I mean, (laughs) there is nothing tiny and button-like about my nose. (laughs) So I I just look at it though as, I mean, I understand why my nose looks looks like this because Uh this is an Italian nose and and Mm -hmm. everybody in my family has this nose. It's not. So 
I'm looking at the guy and I'm thinking, really? Like, you're still freaked out about your nose. Mm -hmm. Uh And so he calls his wife on a cell phone and shows her the Photoshop image that the doctor did. So the doctor does, like, the mock-up where he's the way Mm -hmm. you would show somebody, here's what you are going to look like, here's what I would expect the result to be. And he's like, I want you to look at this picture of me. He's like, what do you think? And she goes, I think you did something to your nose. (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, yeah, I'm at the the plastic surgeons, and he's showing me this. He goes, this is what he could do for me. And she's like, don't change your nose. (laughs) Right? What is well, yeah, yeah. I used to do a thing when um, they used to. There's every now and then they'll put a show on about plastic surgery. Right? There'll be some series people getting plastic surgery, or whatever. And yeah. what I used to do for fun was whenever they would show the the client, I would try to guess what they're gonna have fixed. Oh. So like, okay, if it, what is this person having fixed? And a lot of times you'd see the person, I would see the person, and I would think, man, this is a tough one. Like I don't know mm-hmm. what they. Not because there's so much to fix, but because everything looks looks fine fine. and so I would make a guess and be like okay they're gonna get uh, underneath their eyes done or something and they would be like oh I really hate my jaw and I'm thinking okay I I don't know (laughs) I don't get it it. right so it's really interesting how people judge their own bodies and what they were saying is that a lot of people that look really good tend to have a lot of plastic surgery they just can't quit Mm -hmm. and um, the plastic surgeon said the way that you a lot of people realize they have some sort of a a men- like a, a mental image issue as opposed to a real physical issue is when the plastic surgeons start telling them, no, mm-hmm. I- I'm not going to do this to you. I'm not going to have this next surgery. You've, you've done enough. And that's the only point they... Have you ever watched the show Botched? Oh, gosh, it sounds like a nightmare, so no. So, okay, so it's, it's these two plastic surgeons, and they basically fix, fix other what people. other wow. plastic surgeons oh have gosh. messed up. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's a lot of people that come in there. There was one guy they had that he, like, designs his own implants. What? Like, pec implants and butt implants and, you know, shoulder okay. implant, everything. Wow. And, and he came in. The with client some, designs his own? The client. Wow. Okay. The guy, yeah. And he came in <laughs> with these implants, and he wanted them to put the implants. And they told him no. Mm-hmm. And this guy really has kind of a bizarre obsession with... You know, mm-hmm. it's and he he's actually um, rather slender, mm-hmm. and he doesn't work out in a gym at all. He basically does his whole body with these implants and stuff. And so yeah, had, that is had so scary. Oh already. yes, he'd already had a ton of them. That is so done. scary. And they told him, no, we don't think we're going to do this. Good gravy. I guess yeah. it, to, to kind of wrap this, I've gone on a little bit long about it, but just to sort of wrap it, the reason I thought it was. Um, a good segue to what you were talking about is that it basically is a program that is encouraged to have men open up about their real thoughts and vulnerable thoughts about what, who am I? What Mm -hmm. kind of social pressures do I feel? How does this impact me? How does this impact other people? So many times when somebody's talking about an issue, like if we were talking about body image, everybody would expect like, Oh, you're going to talk about women that are overweight. You're going to talk about, you know, people that are going to be most harshly judged from Mm -hmm. a social context. But that leaves a lot of the conversation out of the conversation, right? I mean, yeah. there's so much else to talk about. And not that this, you know, of course, the, the people that are most hardest hit by, the, by it should, talk, should be the ones where most of the resource goes, most of the conversation goes, most of the support would go. But I think it, it's a good thing to realize sometimes that these issues that hurt this group badly has have ripple effects that hurt others as well that this is hurting everybody and it's not good for anyone and it's especially hurting some people and i when you're talking about your son i would think that these sorts of conversations as opposed to some of the more aggressive conversations right so you'll talk about if somebody was talking about body image and we were talking about for example how how does society view women who don't fit into this perfect image and how does that impact them there's always someone that wants to stand up and kind of really aggressively say, what about men? Mm-hmm. How does the, you know, what about us? We have these. And this was such an assertive way to do it as right. opposed mm-hmm. to an aggressive way to do it. Right. This was somebody saying body image issues can affect all of us. Right. Even the people who think that it's not okay to say it affects them. Even the people who look perfect mm-hmm. and who are men and who it's not. And he, one of the guys even said it's not cool for a man to even talk about this, to say that I'm embarrassed to take my shirt off or I, mm-hmm. he's like, this is not considered manly. And that's what the show is about is what is masculinity? Mm-hmm. And it's called man enough, right? So the, the podcast oh, is called man. man enough. Mm-hmm. 
And what he's basically asserting is we are man enough. Now, what I liked also about the show is that in addition to having like a mix of race and a mix of, you know, that was attractive guys, but I think that was kind of his point. Um, but the other thing that was interesting was that they did also include trans men. Oh, yeah. And they include gay men. And they had a guy talking about issues of homosexuality and how you're viewed as a homosexual male. And he was like, I think that there's a, he, he expressed that he thought that there was a lot of pressure in the gay male culture to look perfect and to mm -hmm. be these perfect men because you're so demasculinized by society when you come out as gay. He also admitted in the podcast that he was HIV positive. He did like a, a layout and a spread as a model or whatever. He, he's famous, but he was kind of a good looking guy. And he was saying that there, it was very bold to come out and do the spread as an HIV positive gay man and basically saying that, you know, you can be sexy, you can be HIV positive, you can be gay. And so they were talking about, you know, images of masculinity as it, as it affected things like that. I mean, it was, it was a pretty bold show. I really enjoyed it. Um, I would say that if I was going to recommend <laughs> yeah. a show to a, a guy in my life that might benefit. This was a pretty good open dialogue about an issue that they were willing to admit um, affects them that they don't think affects, they, they don't think it's cool to talk about it affecting them.